everybody and welcome to another mx bikes video and today guys we're gonna be going over my 2024 settings guide here talking about what i'm using why i'm using it um because you know i use some different settings i don't run default i know there's some fast guys that run default settings and stuff like that but i think that kind of just shows you that settings aren't everything while i think when you're starting it's good to have a good base of settings if you put enough time in i think even with the default settings that you're going to get when you download this game it's not the end of the world you know what I mean? There's just some stuff that maybe you want to know about, and so I'm going to go over that today in this video. Before we get into it, though, hit that sub button. and Hit that like button, boys. You, you know the drill. If you're new here, really think about hitting the sub button. Okay, I upload every single day. I love playing this game. I play it all the time. It's great. It's awesome. Anyway, we're getting right into it. So first with the input settings, you can see all my binds here. Uh, lean is left stick. Um, throttle is right trigger, brake is left trigger, rear brake is bumper, so that's for brake tapping and stuff like that. Um, clutch is left bumper, then you guys got lean on the right stick, and I both binded. Some people only run forward back, um, and some people don't run left right, just because a lot of people from sim. It's For them, it's confusing. I don't know. I personally played a lot of the arcade games, so it doesn't really feel weird to me that I can lean every which way. Some people don't like it, they just do forward back, but I'd recommend doing this right here. And then lean tracking, I don't exactly know what this is. Uh, I just have it disabled. Direct lean, I have it 70. So this is kind of how quickly or I guess how much gravity, I call it how much gravitational force like your bike has coming back to center. So like once you lean it over, how much, how fast does it snap back? So if you want more of like a sim experience, right? MX simulator, you'd put this down to like zero or 10 or 20 where you're really gonna have to work to bring the bike back. It's much more smooth gameplay. If you want it to be kind of snappy, like an arcade game, you put it 100. I used to run 100, but I don't know. I feel like with Poboso physics, it can kind of get a bit wonky. So I just kind of stuck to 70, I think it's a good medium. I think anywhere between 30 and 70 is pretty normal, um, but this is what I run. Combined brakes is basically, you got a brake right here. And so what that does is when you use this brake, using front and back. Um, so if you took this off, you'd only be using front brake for this bind and then rear brake for this bind. But I don't really reach for the right bumper much, so I really just run combined, you know, use both brakes. It's a lot easier to stop anyway. Here's my min and max is for braking, 1070. That might just be default, I have no idea. Um, and then you got lean settings, so 10%, 100% linear, linearity. Smooth is off, everything looks pretty, pretty stock. My gain is 96. I'm not sure what a lot of people run for this lean gain. So this is like when you're using the lean the lean stick, which is my left stick. I think it's just how much things are working. Like if I turn this down to 68, if you look at this yellow bar here, it gets capped. So my stick is all the way to the right right now, but it, the bar won't go all the way. So it's kind of interesting. It's something I haven't really messed with too much. I think I used to run like 93 kind of. Because you don't want to lean all the way over. If you do that, you're just going to tuck the front, slide out, fall. So 96% is what I run for that. Um, and then you have throttle. <clears throat> you can copy that stuff. Brake. Yeah, and gains changed a little bit there. Rear brake. Clutch. Forward back lean. It's probably all stock. And then left right lean. Probably all stock. And then this is, looks like vibration stuff. So like control rumble, I have that off. I don't really think it's, I don't think it's gonna help you to be honest if you run that. So shifting, I shift with my sticks. So you know you can press down on your thumbsticks on Xbox and PS4 controller, whatever controller you have, that's what that's kind of how I shift. Some people think that's weird. It just feels normal to me. It just, it's just an easy seamless way to shift. You don't have to worry about it. Um, starter is how you start your bike. I mean, you never really have to in this game. Um, but I have it as K. Push bike is D-pad. So up on the D-pad is to go, is to push the bike backwards and then down is to push it forwards. Sit is my X button on my PS4 controller. Um, you know, that's how you sit down. Dab, I don't know really what this does. Apparently you can control it manually. I don't think you're really, you're really gonna have enough buttons to do that. So I think I dab automatically, I think. Or maybe I don't dab at all, I have no idea. We'll talk about that more in the simulation settings, but this is a reset right here. So this is kind of how you reset the track. If you fall down, 
um, track marker as well. You want to bind this if you want to reset to a certain point. You can also set your track marker by holding this button down, I'm pretty sure, or this button. It's one of these two. You hold it down, you set the track marker, it says it on screen, and then you can just reset back there every time you hit the reset button. And then, um, this is how you might, I changed my view, so you go from first person to, you know, third person to that stable first person camera. There's three different cameras. A lot of you are gonna start off stock at the like stable gimbal type camera that's kind of at the chest, but you wanna switch to dynamic. That's the best first person camera. So you wanna bind this and then you can click it one time and then it'll take you to that dynamic camera. Look back is why. Um, which is my triangle, my PS4 controller, which is how you look behind you. Very important. You're going to need this when you're racing. You want to know who's behind you. If you don't, you're going to be a hazard. Tear-offs, you're going to need these as well because dirt's going to get on your goggles. You're going to have to rip those off. So that's a pretty cool feature that's left on the D-pad for me. Don't know what heading is. And then these are some of the emotes and stuff. So raise arm. So that's kind of you put your arm up if you're going to let someone pass or you're saying what's up to someone. Um... Wind gesture, I don't know, these are just emote stuff. Angry, I don't even know. I only have these two bind on my keyboard. Um, and then chat right here, so you wanna talk in chat. I click T and then I can type my keyboard and then trick, it's another emote thing. Um, so this is all my replay camera settings. So you guys see like edits and stuff on MX bikes. These are the binds that are very important. You can copy mine, I think mine are pretty good. Um, it's pretty normal stuff, you know. All the normal camera stuff. This is system stuff that I don't even think about or look at ever. Not very important. Okay, so these are my graphic settings. So I have everything basically as high as it can possibly go. The only thing I don't have equipped is track screens, um, which you don't really need. It kind of ruins your frames, to be honest. It's like if there's a screen on the track, like a Jumbotron or something. I'm pretty sure that's what this is, at least for the stock tracks. I know tracks like Asin, for example. Um, have a lot of track screens and it can really ruin your frames when i was on a, a pretty poopy computer at one point yeah having this on was bad it was not not a fun experience so yeah everything's basically on a high all the normal stuff this is misc so this is stuff like audio i have my master pretty low because the game runs pretty loud and i you know make a lot of videos so 10 percent, just what i found works good Break volume 50, a lot of this other stuff should be pretty pretty much stock. Each metric system for movement, so this is important when it comes down to setups and stuff like that. If you wanna you know, give your friends setups and stuff, make sure you're on the same unit system. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. I didn't know you could skip intro, that's interesting. Uh, this is bandwidth, I've been on very high. I don't really know what this is. I'm not a big internet knower. Um, this is auto chat, so you can put a chat message in here and then use these numbers on your keyboard. And if you just click this number at any time, it'll just send it to the chat. So I have some funny stuff in there, inside jokes. Um, this is disabled chat. So if you don't want the chat to pop up, maybe you're making videos and people are like saying some weird stuff in chat, just turn this on, it won't pop up on your screen. Then you have flags, which I've actually never, I never mess with this. So flags come up on your screen um, at certain times. So like if you're going across the finish line, it's last lap, right? The right white flag is going to pop up top right of your screen. If you're getting lapped, the blue flag will come up. I'm not sure exactly what these do. I just have it on 3D. Um, and then these are the important settings. So this is simulation. All right, so you have your onboard view. So this is your two first person cameras. So my field of view is maxed out at 130. This is an interesting number that I don't know what this is, 141. I've never understood what it is. Maybe it's like some type of adjusted FOV or something weird, but yeah, I have it 130. My tilt's 15%, so when you're turning, it's how much your head tilts with the bike. So a lot of people actually run 0% tilt to where when they turn, the bike's just turning under them, but their head is staying straight up, which isn't very realistic, but it's more realistic than if you're running like 100%, for example. That's not realistic. Like your head is always pretty centered when you're riding a dirt bike. It's not like turning all the way over when you're turning. Um, and this is pitch, so this is, you know, whether you're looking up or down, you know, that's what pitch is. So mine's at 35%, it's pretty normal. I think stock's probably around 50, but I just run 35. I like looking down a bit to see the bike under me. Um, that's kind of an important, important thing when I play the game, I wanna see what's going on. 
That's kind of another reason I run a high FOV. But a high FOV has its downsides. Things are coming quicker. Things are much further away in front of you, but they're much closer to your side. So it's kind of warping your view a bit, but once you get used to it, I don't really have any problems with it, to be honest. Free look, no idea what that is. Corner anticipation. So I don't run this, but there's actually a lot of people that do. And what this does is it basically takes the data from the track, because um, every track has a certain system for cuts and stuff like that. It's all laid out. But if you have this turned on, if you're coming into a corner, your head will automatically look ahead. It'll look into the corner. If you don't have this on, which I don't, your guy's always looking straight. His head doesn't really follow corners or anything like that, which isn't a big deal. But if you do want this, it is kind of interesting to play with it. I'd keep it pretty low though. I wouldn't do nothing too crazy or you're going to be kind of wonky. But yeah, lock to bike, you want to have this off. This is your head. So when you're running dynamic, you don't want it to be locked because you want to be able to move. You want to see the movement of your rider. If you have this on, your head is just stagnant. It looks kind of like the normal camera that you start off with in the game. Not a good camera. Show HUD, that is for your gearing, I think, in the bottom right. So there's a mod called Max HUD. If I remember, I'll put this in the description as a link. That's how I have my like data in the top left and the standings on the left side of my screen. So it shows you the places everyone's in, my lap times, all that stuff. And then I have my gears in the bottom right. If you don't know what Max HUD is or I don't link it, just look that up on YouTube or go to MXB Mods and look that up. Super easy. Everyone runs this. Everyone needs Max HUD. But you don't need to use the default HUD because you already have it. Show Rider Stand. So if you guys do not run Auto Sit, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here, then you should probably have this on just so you know when your rider's sitting or standing. It's a little red icon in the bottom right that shows you you're either standing or sitting. So that's important if you use that. I use auto sit, so I don't have to worry about it. We'll get into that a little bit later because it's kind of controversial. Um, this is external view. This is all your 3D third person um, settings. I don't run third person. I think it looks terrible. But some people have some really good settings out there, so don't look at mine. Look at someone who's who runs that that view. And if you're coming from sim or arcade games, you might want to do that. I would highly encourage you to not do it, but it is personal preference. It's up to you at the end of the day. Um, I don't run it though. Okay, then we have riding aids. Okay, so these are all the things that will help you when you play this game. So you have lean help. Um, I don't really know what this is because I've never ran it, but I think it kind of helps you to where when you lean the bike over as much as you can, it never actually gets to a point where the bike like tucks kind of. It almost helps you not lean over too far. You know what I mean? So I think if you run the 96 lean gain like I showed you, you probably shouldn't need this. And if you've played moto games in the past, I don't think it'll take you too long to get used to leaning. So I would keep this off when you start. You just need to learn the game. Game's very hard at, 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 at first. Okay, it's very hard. I get it. It's hard for all of us. But once you learn it and you put the time in, I guarantee you it gets so much easier and you will not regret not running this stuff. So automatic shift, you don't want to run that. Obviously, you want to shift yourself. If you don't want to, though, you can run it. I ran this my first, I think, 200 hours, something like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I shouldn't have ran it. Shifting's not a big deal. You get used to it. I think if you want to start learning shifting, just play in second, third gear. Don't worry about anything else. Just simplify it for yourself. Um, that's a good way to start. Shift help is used in a kind of an interesting way. I don't really know exactly what it does because both of these are both involving shifting. So I know what automatic clutch is. So that's when you're shifting. Obviously, you have to pull, pull the clutch in, right? Um, but I don't have to do that. The game does it for me. It's just for me, it's a thing with the amount of buttons I have. I just don't, I don't got the buttons, bro. Like I don't got the buttons or the mental power to use my clutch to shift. It's just too much for me. Some people don't have this on. Some people also don't have shift help on, which, yeah. I mean, if you want to run it, you want to. I don't think it's a big deal. It's not like a crazy aid that changes the game completely, but it does make it a bit easier. It's to where I literally can just shift with my sticks and that's it. I click the button to shift up. I click it to shift down. I don't have to click any other buttons. It's not a big problem to me. That's very important. Okay, then you have traction help. So, you know, it's like traction control in a car, kinda. You do not want that, okay? You wanna brake traction, you wanna learn that. Um, so no reason to have this on, no reason to have brake help on. Some people run this, some fast guys, so I guess you can run it. It just helps with your braking. 
I don't think breaking's too hard in this game. It's not a big deal. You'll get used to it. Um, this is your rider leans and stuff like that. Never ran automatic. I honestly forgot this was even a setting, but yeah, you want to leave this off. Trust me. Leave it off, dude. Use your right stick. Learn leaning. It's very important. If you've ever ridden a dirt bike in real life, this shouldn't be a big deal to you. You should know where the, your rider weight should be going. That's kind of how I learned in just watching the sport in real life. Because I haven't ridden a dirt bike in like 10 years, but I know where my weight should go in certain situations. I just have learned that over, over time. But automatic rider dab. I don't know exactly what dabbing is. People that know more about riding a dirt bike would understand this term. I think it's when the foot goes out or like touches the ground or something like that. I don't have it even on. I don't really know what the point of having it is. But yeah, you have automatic rider sit. Okay, I run this. I run automatic rider sit, so okay, the game sits for me, which pretty controversial because the way it works is kind of interesting. Um, I can explain it. I don't really want to bore you guys. I've been talking a lot, but I, I might as well just explain it. So how it works is when you lean the bike over, at a certain point, the game sits you down. So it only sits you down when the bike's leaned over, and then you'll stay seated until it comes back up again. So. It's a learning process how it works. You have to learn it. You have to learn how it works. And then you have to take different lines um, on certain tracks depending on you know when you're sitting or standing. Because if you're on a rough track, sometimes you don't want to sit you know through a rough corner. That will actually negatively affect you because you're not soaking anything up when you're sitting. The suspension is going to go down all the way. You're going to get max, max spring. You're going to be bouncing everywhere. So... It's something that must be learned, but for me and just my mind, I've had it on. Um, but there's there's a but to this, okay? I can actually sit. I can sit whenever I want. So I have sit binded. I said that earlier to my X button. So I can sit whenever I want, which I do for scrubbing and stuff like that. But I can't stand whenever I want. I'm kind of a slave to when this is working. But I've learned it. I can still make pro races. Am I as quick? in one lap speed is the top guys no this was off would i be i don't know i personally don't think so i think this has actually helped me um that's just me if you don't want to run that don't run it if you want to be amazing at the game i recommend you don't run this but i do and then finally automatic tire change i think that's just when you go to the pits it just changed your tires automatically i don't really know what it is to be honest i'm not gonna act like i do but everyone has it on so i run it and that's it that is literally it and now i am going to play a race for you guys i did a race just to show you these settings don't suck okay they work fine i'm still kind of barking you know but yeah thank you guys so much for watching the video enjoy the race and hope this helped you guys out all right ladies and gentlemen as promised we we're going to be doing a race just to prove to you guys that the settings are good okay they're not bad you can survive on them you can actually be really good on them and you can win races on them Okay, we're gonna win this race, hopefully. I don't wanna put too much pressure on myself, okay? I just got on, zero warm up, but it doesn't matter, bro. It does not matter. Listen, I think any settings in this game, if you put enough time into them, will do just fine. And, um, you know, a lot of people just run default settings, like a lot of the super fast dudes, so it really just is how much time you put in. All right, it's only a three lap race, pretty short, but we'll just try to get this dub real quick, you know what I'm saying? Be way out front off the start as per usual. Double, triple. That was a failure. Get up. Oh no. Oh, he went down. Get kind of a choke, bro. How do we get up in second there? That's actually insane. This guy's gonna go down too. Don't hit me with your bike. Let's go. All right, now we're checking out. That's going to be our only crash of this race. Promise you. Uh-oh. Bit of an OJ. We're Gucci, though. I'll also give you guys the bike setup as well at the end of this. Because a lot of people have been asking for my Fantic setup. It's not great. Um, it's not something I'll put a ton of time into. It's just some geometry changes and stuff that I usually do to the bikes make him feel a bit better. So don't think you're getting some godly setup, but 
it ain't bad. I mean, the Fantic stock itself is not bad. Yeah, I'm definitely not warmed up. You can see it in my writing. I'll put a heater down before the end of this race. Do like a little 112 at least. Show you guys this big line here. A little quad Edo here. A little quad quad. The table is, is two jumps, alright? That's how I see it. Some people disagree with that. Oh, I'm dead. Never mind. Very stable bike. Let's give him the whoops there. A little, a little... Got a little interesting through there, but we're good. Alright, we, we gotta turn it up now in these next laps. Get this gap extended, boys. Plotting this. Nice. Kind of case that or Gucci. That's kind of the main line there. Over the box. Go through that. Not do good through that sand section. Quad again, quad, quad, triple. Rub the triple out. Could quad over this, but I usually don't. Try to do good in the whoops. Nice. They're pretty hard whoops as well. They're pretty weirdly designed. They're different than most other sections. It's hard to make a setup for these whoops, I've found. I could gear up to fourth, because I'm hitting them in third. I'm not hitting them bad, though. This should be like, like a little 113. Oh no, I freaking crashed. That dragon's back sneaky. It's easy, but sometimes it gets you. I don't know what that lap was, but it was definitely pretty fast. We can go faster, though. Twenty-five second gap is not too shabby, though. Not too shabby. Caught again. We OJ'd it. Doesn't matter. It was Pabosa bounce over that. Oh, never mind. We're down. Not a great last lap. I do want to see what that lap time was, though. That felt pretty good. It might have been a 112, like I promised. Not sure. Gonna be close. I'm gonna jump the whoop section this time. Jumping this. Hitting this line. Jump line, baby. Definitely a lot slower, but kind of fun. All right, boys, let's go to race. We got the dub ski. I might've gotten cuts on that lap, to be honest. I just realized. We didn't, it was a 112 flat, almost a 111, guys. Pushing the pace, pushing the pace out here. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Enjoy the settings. We're not done though, guys. Bike setup time, come on now. All right, so everything red is what was default. So just, if you copy all this black, I think I'm using the metric system here. I'm not sure. Um, no suspension changes. Zero. Completely stock. If you know someone that does suspension, have them rework this. Um, there's definitely better use than stock. Gearing's literally stock, and then all I did was change geo, and that was basically it. Um, pretty simple stuff. Nothing crazy. But, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hit that sub button, by the way. If you've never seen me before, I make videos every single day. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.